Now, what makes stochastic games more interesting, perhaps, than repeated games is the idea that the actions that the players take impact not just the rewards, but also future states. Right, and so this is the same issue that comes up when we're talking about Markov decision processes. And the way we dealt with it in that setting was by defining a value function. So it seems pretty reasonable to try to go after that same idea again. So what I've got here is actually the Bellman equation. And let's look at this together and see if we can fix it because it's not quite right okay. for dealing with the idea of zero-sum stochastic games. So, okay, so you remember the Bellman equation? We've got Q I star. Mm -hmm. So there was no I before, but Q star is the state. It's defined over state actions. So here we're going to define it over action joint actions mm -hmm. for the two players, action pairs. The immediate reward to the player I for for that joint action in that state plus the discounted expected value of the next state. So we need to factor in the transition probabilities. So the transition of actually going to some next state S prime is S Sorry, T of S, A, B, S prime, right? So now we're imagining what happens when we land in S prime. So what I've written here says, well, we're going to basically look at the Q values in the state that we landed in and kind of summarize them, summarize that value back up so that we can use it to define uh, the, the value of the state that we left. You with me? I am with you. All right, so if we put this in, if we say the way we're going to summarize the value for this new state that we land in is we think of it as actually a matrix game, right? That there's payoffs for each action choices of A prime and B prime. And over all of those, we need to kind of summarize, well, which, which of those actions in this table of values that we get for S prime, which of those values are we going to propagate forward and call the value of that state? So what we did in regular MDPs is we said, we'll just take a max over all the actions, or in this case, all the joint actions. Mm -hmm. So what do you think that translates to um well you wrote down max but that doesn't make sense that doesn't that can't be right well it translates it means something it just doesn't mean what we mean it ah, to ah that's true that's fair so so what does it mean and then and then how can we fix it so let's start off with what does it mean it means that you kind of always assume that the joint actions that are going to be taken will benefit you the most so no everyone everyone is trying to make you happy so this makes you optimistic uh, yeah, it's sort of optimistic to the point of... Uh, Delusion? Yes, very good. Right? It just basically says whenever we're in a state, w the whole world is going to choose their actions to benefit me. And this is not what we get in, the, say, a zero-sum stochastic game. In a zero-sum stochastic game, we should be, you know, like fighting it out at this point. So that would work out if everybody's rewards were the same or everybody's rewards were the sum of everyone's rewards or something like that. That's right. If it was some kind of team-based game, mm. or if everybody, you know, was going to sacrifice their own happiness for the benefit of QI or I, I mean. Hmm. So it's it's not reasonable to assume that. In fact, what we what what was it that we were assuming when we had a zero-sum game uh, that was just a single stage, right? Just just a single game, and then we were done. Oh, that people were doing uh, minimax. Right. And maximin. So what if we change the equation to look like that? So what I mean by this is when we when we evaluate the value of a state, we actually solve the zero-sum game in the Q values and take that value and use it in the, in the context of this equation. That seems closer to right. Yeah. I mean, it's not an unreasonable thing to do. It's just say, I'm going to summarize the future by imagining that we're going to play that game that represents you know, all the future. Sure. And I'm going to act in such a way to, to try to maximize that, assuming that you're trying to minimize it, which makes perfect sense if it's a zero-sum game. Right. I was, yeah, and we're still, we're still acting as if there are only two people here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It turns out that when you're talking about zero sum, it really implies that there's only two players. Because if you have a zero sum three player game, it really is just a general sum game. That the, you can imagine that the third player is just an extra factor that's just messing with the numbers to make things sum up to zero. So um, yeah, so zero sum really does kind of focus on this two player setting. That makes sense. So we've got this modified Bellman equation, and we can even translate it into a form that's like Q learning. Hmm. So the analog of the Bellman equation and, and the Q-learning update in this setting would be that we, if we're in some state, there's some joint action that's taken, there's some pair of rewards that comes and some next state that's visited, that the Q-value for that state joint action pair is going to be updated to be closer to the reward for player I plus the discounted expected value, or sorry, the discounted f summarized value or V-value of the, the new state S prime. And we'll, again, use, we'll use Minimax to summarize what the values are in that new state. I like it. And that equation is sometimes referred to as minimax Q. 
because it's like the Q learning update, but just with the Minimax operator instead of a Max. That makes sense. 